Well, that's going to be the same as we sort of established a couple <coughs> weeks ago. I'm going to run through a few things that are on our radar that we'd like people to be paying attention to and kind of touch on the news of the day a little bit. Uh, and we'll kick it out to questions. Again, Dr. Beckham is going to be here specifically for the coronavirus stuff, but we should be able to handle whatever we got. Uh, before I go on, I do want to say briefly um, in relation to the news out of Nashville, it's, it's my hometown. Uh, the news is really heartbreaking coming from there, so from the administration, from the city, our hearts and our prayers and our love go out to those that were impacted in Nashville. Uh, so real quick to run through our stuff. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is Mardi Gras safety, uh, specifically some questions that have come up around parade speed. Um, we were very pleased, I think, with the outcome of the meeting last Thursday, which is a starting point. It's by the means of the end. It's the beginning of the conversation about how we can be more safe during the Mardi Gras season and what everybody can bring to the table to make that happen. Um, apart from the tragic incidents at, at Nix and the Indian that we're all aware of, ultimately the season as a whole was very efficient and much more safe than it has been in years past. Um, the New Orleans Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness and the NOPD invested heavily in improving the efficiency of those parades. They worked with Energy, DPW, and the Sewage and Water Board, the parade studio community, the stage personnel and equipment, all up and down the routes to help deal with breakdowns, infrastructure issues. I think we also have a video of us welding a manhole cover in the middle of one of the parades. So people were out there and they were being responsive. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is that we did have more efficient parades this year in the sense that they started on time and they ended more quickly than they have in the past. That's not because floats were going faster. That's just not what happened. Uh, for instance, last year, I think Zulu, there were three breakdowns on the route at some point during the parade. This year, there were zero. That's not an accident. That's because the preparation that went into it on the front end and uh, contingencies were put in place to help people get moving again as quickly as possible should an issue arise. Um, there's no indication that the speed at which the floats and the elements were moving was increased this year. I think there's some information out there that uh, frankly is inaccurate. We want to be clear about that. As we're all very aware of the incident that happened uh, with Nix, that float was out of stop immediately prior to the incident. So it wasn't a matter of the floats speeding or going too fast. Um, so that's what I'll say on that. I will say that uh, we want to make Colin Arnold, the director of the Office of uh, Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness, he's going to be available to media this week and can speak with Tony about the kind of unveil with him. But the idea is that he's happy to do a deeper dive on what those preparations were and where we did see success. For the Safety and Permits Department, uh, obviously that's Another big piece of the news we had a couple of outlets reporting that last night. Uh, Gilbert Montagna, our CEO, spoke to uh, a couple of outlets about this. The main takeaway from that is that part of what we're doing is a complete overhaul and restructuring, not just of that department, but more largely of the CAO's infrastructure and the way that his department is set up. Um, for the Department of Safety and Parts specifically, that means it's going to be reimagined as the Department of Licensing and Regulation. Uh, as we noted yesterday, Zach Smith ha is being reassigned. Uh, in the interim, Tammy Jackson is with the City Attorney's Office and uh, Code Enforcement Offices. She will be the Interim Director of Safety and Permits while we are seeking a new permanent head for that, that organization, that group. Um, it's, um, what can you tell us about the City's efforts to try to replace some of these inspectors since it looks like some projects may be being held up because of right. um, inspection? I can say only that they're active and ongoing, and it's aggressive. We want to fill these positions as quickly as possible with qualified, capable candidates. It's a priority for the CEO, and it's a priority for the administration. Uh, I can't speak to where we are in terms of applicants right now, but it's a process that we're leaning forward on and that we want to see results as quickly as possible. Do you have any feel for how bad the <coughs> delay problem might be? I don't have an estimate on that. I would say, obviously, as the CEO referenced yesterday, we are working with a thin bench up there, and we want to see that build back up as quickly as possible. Is there any plan? Yeah, Sorry. Right. And I was going to say for um, <clears throat> for the Hard Rock in particular, yeah. uh, first week into March already, where are we at in terms of timeline for demolition? Right. So as the mayor referenced last Thursday, I believe, um, right now it looks like uh, probably the, the loss that's sort of from the March window. So it's moving backwards. Probably April is the most likely right now. Um, I will say, as I've said before, it is a priority for this administration to get that building down and to get our people out. Uh, we want to see that happen as quickly and safely as possible. Um, as soon the day of the minute that we have a, a confirmation of the day, I'm going to be out here, the mayor's going to be out here telling you exactly when that is. Right now, it looks like it's going to be April. Just because the public asks all the time, sure. I'm sure you all hear it too, we do, just as much detail as you can about any delay, because you, you, we did hear eventually earlier, mid-March, now it's sure. April. So just right. so what, you can what has to happen is the, uh, the demolition company and the ownership, the property ownership. Now, it's important to, to keep in mind here, the city does not own that property, right? I know you guys have heard me say this, but it's important for the public to hear this a lot. The city does not own that property. So 
the contractual arrangement that has to happen has to happen between the demolition company and the property ownership. Now, there are other moving pieces there with insurance, with liability, um, all that stuff um, that does necessarily bring in partners at the state level, at the local level. That makes negotiation for that contract more complicated, certainly, than I would like. Um, but it's, it's legally what has to happen to make sure that everything is happening correctly. Um, right now, it's my understanding that um, some of those parties are still in the process of getting the I's dotted and the T's crossed. But the minute we have pen to paper on that contract, we're ready to start moving. And as you've already seen, there is work happening at the site, and we're up on our toes and ready to go for as soon as the contract is completed for the demolition, we can move on that demolition. Okay. Two, two things. Is, is, is early April more of a target date given what goes on here in late April with French Quarter Fest, Jazz Fest, sure. the Zurich Classic? I mean, it, would, would the target date be early April just because of what's happening here in the city and especially in that area? Yeah, I won't say just because. Certainly it would be a factor in, right? Like, so whenever we set the date for the demolition, we're going to have to factor that in terms of Jazz Fest, all the other elements that are moving around at that area at that time. We want to do it in a way that it's as safe and as efficient as possible. So that will that play into the thinking. As I've said before, obviously our priority is to get it down. Um, we had initially said in March, obviously that was our preference, so the closer to that we can get the better. Also, is there any, in light of what's going on with the inspectors and the Department of Safety and Permits, is there any plan to go back and backtrack any of the inspections that may have not sure. been done, or is that even possible right. in light of the construction that's going on? As I believe the CEO had said yesterday, his, uh, one of his goals for this restructuring of the department is he's bringing in new, new talent and new department heads. Uh, one of the things that he's going to be looking for is someone that can come in and help us establish a system for reviewing all of the reports that happen or didn't happen, the discrepancies that we're aware of, look for any that we're not aware of, and make sure we're doing our due diligence two or three times over to make sure that all the structures are safe. Chef Allison. Can you tell me a little bit more about what is happening with the liability piece of this? The, the governor's office is offering some sort of indemnification, sure. right? And that's part of what the delay is. So how, how will that indemnification work Will the state, will the city be on the hook if there is damage right. uh, to surrounding I, properties? I, I, can, I can sort of jump ahead on you there. Yeah. Um, I think the specific details of that are what is being worked out right now, and that's part of why we don't have, where we're not moving right this second, right? right? Which is to say, I don't have all those details locked down because they haven't yet completely been finalized. Once that is done, uh, it's certainly my hope that we're able to go into a deep dive with all of those details in terms of who's going to be responsible for what. Um, it is the mayor's priority and the priority for this administration that the property owners and that the business owners take responsibility and are held responsible in the way that's most appropriate. With the, um, the three buildings right on the same block, um, has any, uh, the mayor has said those are, are coming down, has any official order been given yet or will there be some sort of process to determine that? I, I assume there will be. I don't know that the official order has been given yet. Mm -hmm. um, but as we've said, in order for this demolition to happen the way that it needs to happen, those three adjacent properties are going to be affected and are going to need to come back. So will that not go through HDLC then? or I don't know that right now. I think that's going to depend on the process once we're closer to the date. Rob? Well, I've had a number of uh, people familiar with contracting tell me that the city inspectors really um, she can't be blamed for what happened at Hard Rock. Do you have any, can, can you explain for me what their role is in these inspections and, and uh, do you think they could have made a difference in, in that project? I don't know. I think that's um, that's a question that we're going to have to unpack after we've completed a thorough investigation, right? I don't think right now any of us could look at the site and say, here's what went wrong and here's who's responsible. I think we're very eager to get to that spot. We don't have that information yet. Channel 6. If I, if you don't mind, if I just kind of shift gears and ask about another topic really quickly, the cyber attack. Yeah. Um, how many criminal investigations are going on and who is leading those into the cyber attack? So the ongoing investigation is being conducted by the FBI. A follow-up meeting was held a few weeks ago and several of the city-owned computer, city computers were returned to IT staff and we're working with the FBI. They're, they're leading on that. The city's private sector partner also conducted a forensic investigation shortly after the attack. They've been re-engaged to finalize those findings and to bring us back those results. We're hoping to have that result in the next few weeks. Who, who is the private sector partner? I do not have that in front of me. If you follow up with me out here, I can let you know as soon as we get out. Um, is, do, you, do you hope they can bring it to a speedy resolution? The reason I bring that up is because we're all well aware of the 2016 presidential sure. hack and the entire federal government apparatus when it comes to national intelligence has been unable to pinpoint who certain elections. Is it realistic for you all to believe that you'll ever find out who did this? 
I don't know. I think realistic is sort of. Um, I would qualify more that we want to make sure that when you say bring this to a speedy resolution, we want a correct resolution, right? So our priority is going to make sure that it's done thoroughly and that we have the best answers that we can get out of that process, whatever that time it is. Obviously, it's a priority for us to understand what happened to make sure that we're safe and going forward. As we've said a number of times during this, to respond to this, what we had to do was to shut everything down and to rebuild the house brick by brick. So we do know that on the, the other side of this attack, we're safer now than we were last December, last November, whatever. But in terms of what the root cause of that is, we don't have that information yet. As soon as we get it, we make it. Really? Do you, it's March 3rd. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea who may have caused the problem? Has it been targeted to a department or a person, or have these people that are investigating, as well as your contractor, found out sure. how this got into the system? Not that I'm aware of. No, I think that's still subject of investigation that's ongoing. Um, as you're well aware, there's so many touch points for the system. It's extremely large, it's extremely broad, and I think it's important to resist the impulse to hone in on exactly one person or one department right away, um, because there are so many variables to it, we don't want to jump to a conclusion. WWL. So just back to Hard Rock real sure. quick. Um, and it really, just kind of remind the public, we got pictures yesterday, someone seen people walking around on the upper floors doing work. Can you right. talk at all? Presumably that was the Yes, absolutely, people. no, I'm glad just you brought that up. Because their, their concern was, again, the bodies in there, if you can get people in the building, why not get the body? So again, just. Right, so there's a couple pieces to that. One, um, I think it's important to note that work is ongoing. As I've said, we are trying to be up on our toes and ready to go with the demolition as soon as we have that contract in place and are ready to proceed. So the work hasn't stopped. We're not in a standstill. So you are going to see activity on the site. Um, in terms of the people that were seen on the site yesterday, the USAR team with the fire department has been escorting subject matter experts who are representing the interested parties. That means people that are insurers, plaintiffs, defendants, everybody that's part of all the litigation that's going on, they have an ability to insert folks into that site. Uh, but those folks are only going in up to the 14th floor, right? Uh, we do not allow individuals to go above the 14th floor. In terms of removing the remains, um, I don't know of another way to say it. I think we've, we've been as back as we can. Getting our people out is an absolute priority for the administration. If there were a way to do it safely, we'd have done so. Um, and we are eager to get those remains recovered as quickly as the demolition can be accomplished. But there's a difference between sending people in to make these inspections in a guided way on the 14th floor than there is in the, frankly, heavy lift of shifting that debris in a very delicate situation in a way that could potentially put more lives at risk. Is that the issue? What are Kim LaGrue's <coughs> qualifications? Does she have a college degree, and is it required for her to lead the department that she was leading at the time of the cyber attack? So, the CIO's job description states that an IT degree is preferred, but is not required based on the candidate's experience. Kim LaGrue has 30 years of experience in information technology, and over 20 as a city employee. She is uh, recognized nationally for that experience and has been uh, elevated in a number of ways in that industry, right? She has the full confidence of the mayor and of this administration. Was that qualification pre-existing this administration, or was that changed for her for this administration? I don't know the answer to that, but I can't imagine it was changed. Um, I will say again that uh, Kim, oh, but there we go. She was recently named the president of the North American City Leadership Forum. She's a leader in the field. Um, her responsiveness on the cyber incident from top to bottom has been a gold star for us, and we have every faith in her ability to continue to do so. But she doesn't have a college degree, though. She doesn't. Okay. But again, that's not part of the, the job description. Can you find out if that was tweaked by your administration, if that was pre-existing for Certainly the last administration? Certainly I can, but, but okay. I can tell you, Kim, Kim was doing the role before we stepped into office. Yeah. Not that job, though. As I understand, Kim was working as the CIO acting prior to taking on the job full-time when we came in. We'll get back to you. Okay. The advocate. Um, the people that are being uh, brought into the Hard Rock, mm -hmm. um, is there any more evidence collection going on at this point, and is there anything you can discuss about what of specific? There's not a lot I can discuss, and we'll say all that's part of the evidentiary protocols that go through the, the judge. Um, all of this, obviously, is wrapped up in litigation, and part of the painstaking nature of the process means that we have to make sure that all parties involved have the access that they need and are able to sign off on the evidentiary protocols that the judge puts into place. Part of that is providing their representatives access to the site in a way that we can do it safe. Have you all received any updates from OSHA at this point, or Not do you expect to before? Again, that timeline is still mid April, April 14th, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no updates on that. All right, anything else? Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Wash your hands. Thank you. Yeah.